he can do it. He's got to use himself. He's got to get on his hind end. He's got to, he's got to put him in an athletic, himself in an athletic position to be able to do it. He needs to watch where he's at, think where he's at, and stop overreacting. Now Dennis here at Capital Training Shoeing. Just going to give you a recap on what went on out here with, with this horse uh, in the video you're getting ready to watch. This was, is a is a tool. It, it's simply a tool. It's it's the the circus pole, and I've got some some ground poles out there. And this horse, especially on the ground, has has, has been very pushy, and he he doesn't want to. Uh, to listen to a human being, he wants to do things his way. So this is a this is a tool here to help me develop more respect from this horse to me. For one, it also when I when I had the range between his legs and tied up over the saddle, it was a it was a tool to help this horse learn how to carry himself in a posture that that would allow him to utilize his hind end more effectively. And, and how to carry himself in a way uh, to make everything easier. This, this horse had learned how to avoid listening by being up and over. So uh, it, you're gonna see that this is a tool. He didn't get fixed in this video, but this is a tool in the process to, to uh, help this horse to be more comfortable as he's being ridden and also to help him to be more attentive to a rider so anyway take it for what it's worth i think it's a valuable tool it's one i use a lot and and i i see positive results from it every time hi dennis here capital training shoeing let me introduce you to this pole here <laughs> it's, it's just a piece of pipe nothing special about it but it's in the ground as far as it's sticking out of the ground and it's solid and I've got it out here in a wide open field. And the reason that I have it out here in this, in this kind of a configuration is because I want a horse to think they can leave whenever there's no boundaries holding them. I want, I want, a, I want that horse to find out that listening and getting soft is the right answer. Bracing and going away is the wrong answer. This particular horse, I've got him bridled up in such a way as that if he if he raises his nose up, the bridle reins are gonna are gonna stop him. And the reason that I'm doing that, this is an older horse that had learned how to avoid a rider in high-level jumping competition by sticking the nose up, hauling the back, and he found out, uh huh, I have found my escape route. This horse started going over to the side of the fence and rearing up and just doing anything like that because of that escape route to keep from going back to work. So there's nothing wrong with the horse. He just found an escape route with a rider on his back. So this is a tool. This is not the end all fix all, but it is a tool. It's a tool that I believe works very well. And there's two things that this this gentleman right here helping me won't do. One, he'll never pull too hard. The other thing is, he never releases too soon. <laughs> and I can hold this horse here with the help of this instrument right here where I might not be able to hold him here if I didn't have the help of this instrument. I've got these poles laying out here in no specific distance spacing. I don't want it set up to be a perfect world where this horse can just, you know, shut his eyes and take three steps and, and go over the next pole. I want him to watch. I want him to set himself up as he's approaching each pole to be able to go over it without hitting it. I don't care if we're walk, trot, or canter. It doesn't matter to me what gate we're in. He needs to, I mean, they've been jumping him over six foot fences. It shouldn't be any effort going six inches over these poles out here but he's, you'll see he's going to trip around out here and act like you don't know how to do it and he's, 
field losses. So what this is going to do is help him to find his own balance. It's going to help him to develop a little more respect for uh, somebody's hands. Now, am I, do I have it on there tight enough to hold him down? No. It, it's only there if he chooses to go against it. It's only there if he chooses to go against it. So I'm not making this horse do anything. I'm not, I'm not forcing him to do anything. I'm going to let him do what I want, which is to go around here comfortably, looking where he's going, and... himself he's got to get on his hind end he's got to he's got to put him in an athletic himself in an athletic position to be able to do it he needs to watch where he's at think where he's at and stop overreacting see him go to the outside there and pull on that line He's trying to get on the outside of those poles. He's pulling on this line too much, see how tight it is. It ought to have some slack in it. There he's got slack in it. Changing leads, he shouldn't be changing leads. So these are all things that will be Self-correcting here, as this horse quits just not thinking and starts listening. See now, here I've asked him to stop, and he just he just was blowing his way through. I let him sit there a minute and catch his air, so that when he sees me make a move out here, that he can start thinking about shutting down. He can start thinking about listening. Yeah. If you were trying to ride him around this, you would feel him pulling on your hand. Just stay on the inside of this these poles for a minute and see if he can't find his way. You see how much slack is in those in that line right now? And he's just walking or trotting around there nice and comfortable. I'm gonna let him go out, start going across those poles again.
trying to come in to avoid the work. Getting stopped again, he's not paying attention to me. I'd rather him not face up, but at least he stopped. So that's a that's a step in the right direction. Getting stopped. They're slack in those in those bridle reins, so he's not even he's not even feeling the bridle. He stopped there. Thought he was gonna take the stopping bait there at that pole, and he thought about it too. But then he said, oh, "I got to blunder out here and face up." When I say blunder out there, I mean if he was listening, he'd have stopped right over there and stayed over there. But he was trying to do his own thing, which that's what this horse has learned how to do, is avoid, avoid, you don't have to can around there all the time, he can soften up. So that's going to be more difficult for him than being on the correct lead. Trying to jump too soon times is because he didn't have enough room to gather himself up. This isn't about making perfect jumps. This is about getting this horse to soften, getting this horse to listen. Getting this horse comfortable. Help him to find a way. Back. I didn't ask him to come in. I'm just trying to get the knots out of the end of this. We up here. This is not a device of torture. This is simply him taking the wrong move and do his own thing there instead of just moving them shoulders over and, and politely going the direction I want him to go. I'm going to hold him in short here and have him just go around the inside of those poles. See his hind end swinging out, he's leaning in, he's pushing, he's not where he needs to be. This horse stand up, bring his hip in like that right there. He'll stand up, bring his hip towards me, like that right there. That outside hind foot should land between the tracks of the front, front two feet. Right now he's wanting to swing to the outside, which means he's not using his hind end correctly. When he starts using his hind end correctly, then going out there across those poles, he's going to 
going to be a real easy thing. Right now he's rushing, pushing, leaning. And that's what he's learned how to do in that show situation. Instead of listening and being respectful and riding like he's between the rider's legs and between the bridle reins, he was just used to grabbing the bridle and doing his own thing. I'm softening up there right now. We'll cross here and get stopped. Nice. Now, I'm going to let him sit there and just relax in that. Because he stopped, he stayed parallel. That means he's listening to me. And before he turns, I'm going to send him on the same direction. Get stopped again. That time he won't move his hind end out. So I'm going to, uh -uh. Not going to let him have any reward in going the wrong direction. Ran through me right there. There's the right answer. Wanting to pull on that line. A little bit there. I need him to listen. I don't need him to think about that. Don't face up there. Don't face up there. That facing up is just a way to avoid work. different if I asked him to face up, but I didn't ask him to face up. He should have stopped. If he was listening to me, he'd have stopped over there. Move that front end out, get stopped. There, I'll take that. And see how he placed his feet right there you see, that's a horse that's listening. He can do this as he's traveling. And see, when, it, when he moved and I didn't tell him to move, that, that's avoiding just as, just as blatantly as not moving when I've asked him to move. Even though he's got the opportunity here to sit there and rest, he's just looking for an opportunity to run away. That's all that is. Looking for an opportunity to run away. Well, I'm not going to let him run away. But I will let him stand there and, and give me a yes sir, what can I do for you next? You see the difference in expression that he's got right there? His head comes down, now he's getting to rest, rest in that. So this is a process. You don't get them fixed in a time, <laughs> but this is a way of, of continually reading the horse, watching what's going on. And this tool here helps me uh, to be able to accomplish what I want so that this horse can have a good attitude while he's working.